Hi everyone, Karen Rotkind here, the Woman's Positive Psychology Coach with a Purposeful Monday all about how we deal with those pesky, nasty, nuisance situations that tend to pop up along the way on our path. You know, here we are, we have, you know, we're, we're out there living our purpose, we're doing great things in the world, we are, we have our families, we have our friends, you know, we, we're hopefully doing work that we love doing, and yet, little obstacles, you know, pop up every once in a while. And if you're like most people I know, myself and my clients, we don't want those obstacles. We just want to be living our lives and enjoying them. You know, we don't want the kind of situation where it could be a, a health provider sends you a bill that you know is wrong and it's going to take hours to work through and you know you have to because otherwise your credit could go down and your brain starts to spiral down about all oh, these things I have to do with that one bill. Or it could be a situation with a family member where you're not getting along with a family member and even though everything else in your life is great, this situation is so painful and something you know that's really taking over your mind and emotional space that it's bringing the rest down. Or you could be hopeful about a relationship and you find your mind just obsessing about that. When you know, you know that it's got to take its own course and you've got other things to do in life. So why is this happening? What is going on? Well, First, we have to understand a little bit about being human and a little bit about the human brain. We've you know, talked about this before. Our brains, we as humans, are actually wired for negativity, right? Because our ancestors, they were out in the desert and there was fear of a saber-toothed tiger coming to eat them. So our brains evolved to constantly be looking for threat, right? So the majority of us, that's how our brains are constantly scanning the world. And it's a good thing. It's actually for survival. Where it becomes a bad thing is when we allow that instinct survival mechanism to so take over our lives that we don't move forward in a positive way. Because even if it's, you know, a bill that we have to track down or it's, you know, a family situation, it's not a saber tooth tiger that is going to eat us up, right? So, but our bodies don't know the difference. Our brains don't know the difference between those two kinds of threats in our life. So the reason I'm talking about this this week is because I'm dealing with a situation right now and I try to use my own life as an example, you know, as I'm out there te teaching and talking with people in the world. And I was struck with this situation this week in that on the one hand, I'm working on so many exciting projects so that I can, you know, one project for young girls to, you know, encourage and instill confidence and a project around companies to come together around common purpose and really engage employees in having meaningful work. A project, you know, my book project for women around really knowing their purpose in life and pursuing it. So all these exciting projects. And at the same time, in the last week, I've had a situation come to a head where someone owes me a lot of money and I realize that they're never paying. And it is going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of effort in order to try to get this person to pay. And it was really beginning to not only threaten my day with what I needed to do, but also threaten my trust level. I'm someone who does trust quite a bit. And I trust in the universe that, you know, karma and I'll support someone and they'll support me and, and we'll honor each other's agreements. And that's how life happens. So when this situation hit ahead a few days ago, I thought, you know, I have all these exciting things going on and the universe is providing so many wonderful connections around these projects that I mentioned that when this nuisance challenge situation happened, I said, I'm not going to focus on the challenge because I know how the brain works. The brain can only hold seven bits of information at a time. So I know that if I focus on this negative situation, then it was going to bring down my whole day. It's called a do downward spiral of negativity. I knew if I really focus on it and I just, then it was just going to bring me down, right? And I was going to catastrophize it that, you know, oh, I need that money. And what will I not be able to pay if I don't get that money? And now, you know, I can't trust anyone with this kind of thing and just downward spiral, right? Whereas on the other hand, if I had focused on all these positive things that were happening, that creates an upward spiral of positivity where I start to see more opportunity. I start to hear and believe more in humanity. So which one was I going to focus on? Well, the fact of life is that I had to focus on both. It's just a question of in what measure and in what way, right? Well, I knew better, but I have to tell you that the day that this came to a head, 
I found myself, even though I said I'm not going to focus on this negative situation, I'm not going to let it bring me down, by the end of the day, guess what had happened? Yep, I'm human. By the end of the day, I was so brought down, all I could do was think about the situation and, you know, begin to catastrophize it and really get frustrated with it, and I didn't do one piece of work. I just became so down about it, right? And then I started beating myself up. How could you have let yourself do that? You know better, right? So perhaps you've been in that situation, and that's why I share experiences from my own life, because I think we've all been there. And so I had to make a decision the next day, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to let this situation drag me down again in an emotional spiral? Not a, you know, my brain going out of control and an emotional downward spiral. Or am I going to focus on these things that really need, that are exciting and positive? Well, what I realized is, number one, this duality of emotion, both the positive and the negative happen at the same time in our life. I would love to say that they don't. But often, when something negative is happening, we go right to thinking, you know, everything's terrible. Instead, what we want to do is realize, and there's been wonderful research done on this, that in our lives, in any moment, we actually can be happy and sad at the same time. It's research out of the University of Chicago. Previously, we had thought, you're either happy or you're sad. Nope. There are lots of times in our, situa- in our lives where we're happy about one situation and unhappy about another. Or we're happy about a part of a situation, like maybe you love your coworkers, but you don't particularly love the work or you love some things about your partner and you're frustrated about other things in your partner. So this duality of life is happening all the time. And the more we can accept that this is life, the better off we're going to be. So what we need to do when these situations threaten us, right, is number one, say, okay, I know that this is duality. Number two is we need to then be able to put this negative situation in perspective and deal with it with the appropriate amount of mind space, meaning thinking logically, what do I need to do to resolve these things, right? How can I, are there any logical steps I can take? Like for me, there were actual steps I could take with this person who owes me money. And I could set aside a certain amount of time, I'm going to spend an hour or two hours and just go through these things that I need to go through. And then once I had done everything I could with the situation, then be able to release it and say, I've now done all I can. I'm going to let the next step take its place. Because obsessing over it was just taking me away from my other work. And this is where, frankly, women who are watching this, we can learn something from the page of men. We ruminate. It's one of the things that makes women more depressed than men, is that we ruminate, ruminate on the negative. Men are, have an easier time of compartmentalizing. So what we need to do when we have these situations, again, is one, accept it. Two, logically think how much time can I give to it and what are the steps, the logical steps I need to take with it and put it there. And then three, we need to have an emotional conversation with ourselves that reminds ourselves, yes, this is happening right now. And six months from now, a year from now, it, this too shall pass. And it could be a day from now. That in our lives, things happen, we remember the flow, and that when we look at the bigger picture, we can remember that this too will be a blip on the radar. It will be something that we have overcome. It will be something that we have a lesson around uh, to learn for the future. And then we can begin thinking about with that kind of emotional, compassionate space, right? We can begin thinking about, well, what else is good in life? As my dear friend and colleague Kaylee Place says, she says, what else is true? Well, what else was true in my life as this was going on was that I have these wonderful projects. Where, and the universe was providing all sorts of resources and connections with these projects. And what else is true is that these projects aren't about me. They're about supporting you and supporting women of the world and young people of the world and companies of the world, right? What else is true is that I have a greater mission. And that the more I focus on that greater mission, then the more, the more that will happen, the more that will come true. And it doesn't mean that this other negative situation isn't frustrating and won't, you know, threaten to bring me down. It may. And every once in a while I keep looking at it and I've got to fight the urge, fight the temptation to let it bring me down. Instead, I look at it and I say, do I need to do anything else with it right now? For instance, I looked at the situation a couple days ago and I realized it's coming to the next step. So who can I get that might be able to help me with that step? Okay, I took care of that piece and then I put it again on the side and in its place. And then I can focus again on the positive. So it's a constant practice that we have to be able to deal with something, not catastrophize it, and just work with it in our mind, 
keep it small in its place, put it in perspective, and then refocus our attention on all that is wonderful and all that is great and all that's opportunistic in the world. It's a constant practice, but that's what being human is. And I guess that's all the lessons that we have to learn in life is how we don't let these negative things, these little things, bring us down. When frankly, folks, we've got greater purpose on this earth. So with that, I hope that you have a fabulous week, that you love yourself, you live with that purpose, and you love life. Bye for now.